Hello and welcome. It's 2 30. It's the 22nd day of October 2021. It is a bright, shiny October afternoon here in Ventura County of about 60 degrees. The weather is sunny and mild, though there are rumors of a storm approaching us and a atmospheric river hitting Northern California. No, that is not what it sounds like. It's not actually a river in the sky. It is just a term for a lot of water in the sky hitting a certain area over a short period of time due to atmospheric meteorological stuff like La Nina and other things. Earlier today, I made a series of videos that were received rather poorly. I have since deleted them because several individuals made the comment that I don't know what I'm talking about. And my response was, well, maybe you don't know what you're talking about. Rather than continue to get into a I, I know you are, but what am I fight, I decided to do a series of videos addressing all the races in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons to clarify any mistakes I may have made and moving forward hopefully have a better understanding of the things that I tend to maybe gloss over and I shouldn't. So starting today we're going to take a look at each and every one of the core races in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons as they are presented to us on the Dungeons & Dragons SRD. Uh, these are the core races, the ones that appear in the initial player's handbook and any options that those initial player's handbook races have. If this uh, series is received with enough uh, positive responses, we may explore the uh, new weird, wacky, optional races from some of the other books like Tasha's and Xanther's and Volo's and the Magic the Gathering books and Ravenloft and uh, which lights and I don't know there's a lot of fifth edition books so here we go humans in the reckonings of most worlds humans are the youngest of the common races late to arrive on the world scene and short-lived in comparison to dwarves elves dragons and cockroaches perhaps this is because of their short lives that they strive to achieve as much as they can in the years they are given or maybe they feel they have something to prove to the elder races and that's why they build their mighty empires on the foundations of conquest and trade. Whatever drives them, humans are the innovators, the achievers, and the pioneers of the world. So, human traits, Dungeons and Dragons. It is hard to make a generalization about humans, but your human characters has these traits. Your ability scores each increase by one. Age, humans reach adulthood in their late teens and live less than a century. This has, of course, since been changed. Now, humans live about 100 years. Alignment. Humans tend towards no particular alignment. The best and the worst are found among them. Size. Humans vary widely in height and build from barely 5 feet tall to well over 6 feet tall. Regardless of your position in that range, your size for the terms of gaming mechanics is medium. Speed. The base walking speed of humans is 30 feet. Languages. You can speak, read, write, common and one extra language of your choice. Humans typically learn the languages of the other peoples they deal with, including obscure dialects. They are found with sprinkling their speech with it, words borrowed from other tongues or curses, elves musical expression, dwarves military phrases, and so on. Um, so the common tongue, there's often been a lot of, you know, what exactly is the common tongue? Is it English? Is it Spanish, uh, you know, the assumption would be, well, the common tongue is the language the people you're playing with speak the most. So if you're playing in, you know, Russia, then the common tongue would be Russia. If you're playing here in the USA, then the common tongue would be Spanish or English. Um, I like to think of it more like the language from, you know, Blade Runner, which, or, um, was it, uh, Firefly how they sort of mix together English and Chinese and Spanish into sort of its own race. That kind of feels like what the definition of common tongue would be really, right? It's not necessarily English or Spanish or Russian. It's sort of a, this a language has kind of evolved, you know, with a combination of things. But maybe I'm wrong. Variant human. If your campaign uses the optional, optional feat rules from the player's handbook, your dungeon master might might allow these variant traits, all of which replace the human's ability score increase trait. So a normal human gets plus one to every stat. The variant human gets two different ability scores of your choice by one. 
Skill, you gain proficiency in one skill of your choice. Feet, you gain one feet of your choice. Now that sounds pretty awesome. I'm not sure, you know, plus one in every stat as opposed to just two stats to go at plus one, but you get a free skill proficiency and a free feat. I'm surprised in all the years I've played fifth edition, not more people have chosen variant human over regular human. But that plus one in every stat can make a huge difference in a lot of builds, so maybe that's why. And maybe just a lot of people don't like feats. It does say it is optional, so if you're playing a game where the DM has said, no, we're not using feats, we're just using the stat boost rule, then optional things. What would be an optional human as opposed to a normal everyday run-of-the-mill human? I suppose that would be individuals that have, you know, s sort of evolved in a very specific area, setting, and thus they're maybe not as cosmopolitan as your general everyday D&D human. Uh, for example, you know, if you had a race, uh, you know, a group of humans that had all grown up someplace where there were giant trees for, I don't know, why not? So the whole group of humans had spent their entire life living amongst trees, and a generation and generation and generation of humans living in these vast Ewok Endor level of, you know, tree houses. They would obviously not be as cosmopolitan as a normal human. They would be more, have evolved more specifically to survive in that particular environment. So you might give them the bonus feat of acrobatics or a bonus to athletics or, you know, something where they're tree jumping or survival kind of thing. Um, so I guess that would be the idea to reflect certain very specific cultures. Anyways, that is the human from Dungeons and Dragons as per the Dungeons and Dragons SRD as is made available to us on D&D Beyond and several other sites. So if there was any ever confusion as to what a human in the terms of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons is, you can find all this event information at dndbeyond.com slash races slash human. Going forward, we will, as I said, explore each and every race in the core rulebook. And if you like this and want to hear more, we will all explore, so also explore the core classes and the optional classes and the optional races, which considering how many optional classes and optional races there are now, could be a very, very long time. Once again, I apologize for the video I made earlier. It was in bad taste, and moving forward, we will tend to avoid that topic. Till next time, stay warm, stay dry, stay healthy, stay happy, enjoy what's left of this lovely October morning, but watch out for frogs who are looking to upgrade their cheese population. Pumpkin Spice.